Doc, those blood tests are back. It looks like the patient has anemia and they've got a deficiency in B12 and folate. Hmm, interesting. And how are you going to manage that? Well, they both need replacing, so I'll start off by giving some folic acid. Wait a minute. Theoretically, it's quite dangerous if you don't give the B12 first in this context. Huh. That's exactly why this question can come up in medical exams. Look, I'll explain it to you, but first, like and comment to support this content. Start off, tell me, what's the most common cause of a macrocytic anemia? Uh, B12 or folate deficiency. Correct, the red blood cells are large, but why is that? Don't B12 and folate interfere with DNA metabolism or something? Folate is metabolized through a number of steps, and in doing so, it liberates thymidine, which is a DNA base pair needed for DNA synthesis. At the end of the pathway, it's trapped as methylated tetrahydrofolate, and that requires vitamin B12 to re cycle it back to the form which can then make more DNA base pairs. Still with me? Yeah, that makes sense so far. Let's say you carry on and make the mistake of giving the folates before the vitamin B12. Supplemental folate is going to correct the anemia by providing that thymidine. You happy because it looks like you're on top of everything until your patient's nerves stop working. Oh, really? Key question is what does vitamin B12 do that folate doesn't? Um, I'm not sure. The answer is in the myelin sheath. In high school, you probably learned about south streak induction and that myelin is needed to make nerve propagation faster. Now, what's the name of that neuropathy induced by vitamin B12 deficiency? Subacute combined degeneration of the cord? Exactly, and that's why you give vitamin B12 before folate. So was that helpful? So helpful. Great, like and follow for more.